Hey guys, happy Thursday. Dr. Isabella Wentz here. I'm really excited to be hanging out with you tonight. I have some really, really exciting ex announcements about Hashimoto's protocol. So as you may know, Hashimoto's protocol, the 90-day plan for reversing thyroid symptoms and getting your health back by yours truly is um, now available wherever stores are sold. And so this book just came out on March 28th, and it's now available on Amazon. It's available at Mar Barnes & Noble, um, in bookstores all across the country. I got a chance to visit the book at the Barnes & Noble store the other day, and I'm really, really excited to let you guys know this book is now um, the number two book out of every single book in the entire country on all of Amazon. This is really, really important, you guys, because this means that people are starting to notice and care about Hashimoto's. So um, I would, if you're watching, I'd love for you to say hello and let me know where you're from, just so that I know that you're here and to let, you know, to let me know that my audio is working and I'm not just um, talking to myself here. Um, it's always a little bit nerve-wracking when I first go live on Facebook. So if you're here, if you could write me a little bit of a comment and say hello, let me know where you're from. I see all of your likes and hearts, so thanks for sending those. Those are really, really touching. Um, Shauna got her book today, so excited to get started. Yay! Lisa from Maryland, that's awesome. Soon from Texas, hello. Kelly says audio is working okay. Phew! Hello, Kelly from Charlotte. Um, Jody from Connecticut. Tanya from Tallahassee, Florida. Charlotte, hello. Hello, Karen from Wisconsin. So, like I said, I have a really, really exciting announcement, you guys. Um, Hashimoto's Protocol is now the number two book on all of Amazon in the entire country. And it's, it was the number one book on Amazon in Canada. Now, what this means is that people are starting to pay attention to Hashimoto's. So people are starting to notice. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but um, my training is in public health, and I was trained by the U.S. government in how to spread change and innovation in healthcare. And um, this used to be my job professionally before I came, became the thyroid pharmacist and before I took back my health with thyroid disease and ended up writing my Hashimoto's Root Cause, the first book. And um, I followed a pretty predictable pattern of how to, cha how to spread change and innovation in getting the word out about how to change the way that thyroid disease is treated. My goal is for all of you guys to get the proper care that you need from every single doctor, no matter where they are, if they're a functional medicine doctor, a primary care doctor, endocrinologist, and to get diagnosed 10 years before we actually get diagnosed. On average, it takes about 10 to 15 years for a person to get diagnosed with Hashimoto's, and this means years and years of suffering, and then they never, um, hardly ever get the right treatment. So um, Hashimoto's protocol is going to change that. I'm so excited to get the word out there. Um, when uh, Today I'm going to do a little bit of a reading from the book. So we're going to cover how to figure out your triggers and the fundamentals of healing and how to create a healing team around you. So I'm going to be reading from chapter three if you guys want to read along. Some of you I know have already got your copies and I know they're starting to ship right now. So some of you might have gotten them yesterday, which is exciting. Some of you are getting them today. Most of you will get the book by the 15th of April. So by tax day, you should have it. And it depends on where you ordered it from. So if you ordered it from um, Amazon with two-day shipping, that's right now um, Amazon overnight and Amazon two-day shipping is the fastest way to get it. Or by walking into a bookstore, of course. Um, most bookstores in the country do have it, which is really, really exciting. And, you know, they're displaying it, and it's really great because people are now going to see it, and they're potentially going to learn that there is more that they can do about Hashimoto's than um, just take thyroid hormones and continue to feel unwell. So let's see here. Guys are saying hello from Victoria from Georgia, Tammy from Arizona. Hello, hello. Andrea from New York. She just got her book today. I can't wait to read and get on to my road to recovery. Andrea, that's awesome. I'm so excited that you're taking this step towards getting your health back. I'm very, very proud of you. I'm excited to see what is going to transpire in your life once you start taking back your health. Um, Jody says, cheers to you. Your hard work is paying off. Thank you, Jody. Yay. Um, Kelly said, I called my compounding pharmacist today, recommended LDN. It's catching... Kelly, congratulations on taking action. Um, I hope the LDN does help you. Um, we see tremendous 
helpful results in people. And congratulations on seeking out health, you know, because that's really what you're doing is you're seeking out change in health for yourself. Beth says, I ordered it a few months ago. When will it arrive? So books are shipping right now. So we have this big warehouse somewhere in the Midwest, and they're processing the orders like mad. Um, and depending on how you ordered it through Amazon or Barnes & Noble or through the pre-order page, they're shipping between now and by the 15th, everybody should get their books. Ibi Ibi says, got your book today and I haven't put it down. Oh, that's awesome. Hello from DC. Hello, Ibi. Nice to see you. Um, Rachel, is your book in audible format? It is. Yes. Um, I'm really, really excited about that. Um, part of my healing journey when I was first going through Hashimoto's, um, I just was working and I really didn't have time for reading um, after work because I was so tired, but I had a commute. And so I ended up reading a ton of books via audiobooks. And it's really exciting is, you know, you can just pop in the book while you're reading or um, while you're reading, while you're driving, while you're cleaning up the house, whatever, you start listening to the book and you just absorb the information. So yes, um, if you go to Amazon, there's a Kindle version, which I'm really excited about as well, an audible version, and then the hardback version. And um, so this is another exciting annou announcement. So the hardback version is number two on all of Amazon in the entire United States. Um, I would love for you guys, if you haven't had a chance to get your copy yet, or if you have a family member um, that you think would benefit from the information, um, if, you can, if you're planning on buying it, which I hope you are because it's going to tremendously help you on your journey, is getting the book through Amazon and helping us get that book to number one. Here's the reason why. Um, I have been trying to do like get big bloggers to write about Hashimoto's and I've been trying to get like really like media shows and I'm not going to name the shows but um, let's just say they're national shows and to talk about Hashimoto's because so many people go undiagnosed and they have they're told that they have a sluggish thyroid they're not told that they have an autoimmune condition and they're not told that they could do anything other than to take pills and they feel horrible they're struggling with their weight, they're struggling with fatigue, they're struggling with so many symptoms that are life crushing. And I know this because this was me for 10 years, right? And now I'm like back with a vengeance, um, as you will be too when you get your health back. I hope that you'll, um, I hope you're already joining me and spreading the message. But I know once you get your health back, um, let's focus on you um, getting your health back. And then I hope that you'll shout it from the rooftops because that, it's just, um, criminal that so many people don't know that there's a way to feel better with these things and it's not like I'm not saying that one thing is gonna work for everybody that I have the magic pill I don't but I have an entire book of tried and tested strategies with over a thousand people with Hashimoto's more than 80% of them felt better within the first 90 day protocol um, close to 70% of them felt better within the first two weeks of doing these things that can be done in people's own homes. I just feel like people deserve to know. And so um, I've been trying to scream it from the rooftops. I've gone on like every single podcast, um, have done guest blogs, have started my own blog, um, you know, created a whole documentary series about it because um, nobody wanted to have me in a documentary and nobody, you know what I mean? Like I've just been trying to make it happen as much as possible to create as much awareness as I can. Um, and still I was getting, I'm getting, you know, and I, I'm fine with getting rejected, but people are saying, oh, well, Hashimoto's, it's kind of a rare condition and we don't know what it is and it sounds exotic and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Like, so the media channels and the big bloggers and like the medical associations, um, they're not really helping us get the word out there. But since the book reached number one, or number two on Amazon, I'm saying if, you know, if it reaches number one, we'll even get more of this. Um, I did have a call this morning with a national producer for a major show to talk about the book um, to national media and to talk about Hashimoto's and what it is and how people may be at risk and that they can recover their health and that they can feel better. I also got a, um, and I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to confirm what they are because I don't, have the, um, I don't want to jinx it, right? So, but I also got an offer to do a book signing. So we've been trying to get book signings all over and that's been challenging because people are saying like, oh, well, how many people actually have Hashimoto's? Well, 
27% of people have Hashimoto's in the United States and most people don't know it. They're told they're either that they're crazy, lazy, infertile, or um, you know, that they're depressed or fat and they're eating too much and they're feeling bad for 10, 15 years. They're not getting the help that they need. If they do get the help that they, if they get diagnosed, then they're just put on thyroid medications and they oftentimes go on feeling horrible and potentially developing other autoimmune conditions. So we need to change that. And um, one of the things I was told is if you guys share this post, the most, the more shares that we get on a post, the more comments, um, the more um, you know awareness that we get on the book. So if you've already had it and you love it, I would love for you to review it on Amazon. And if you haven't gotten it yet, I would love for you to pick up a copy, um, you know, for yourself, for your loved ones, for um, you know, a library or anybody that you could think of. Because really, like, I mean, looking at the if, we, if doctors were doing people the proper diagnosis, 27% of people in the U.S. alone would have Hashimoto's. So when you're looking around, one in four people has this condition. And you, you see people who are, you know, not everybody's going to have the same symptoms, but you might see a woman who's having miscarriages. And you probably don't even know that she's having miscarriages because she's carrying that in her heart. And it's breaking her heart and her, you know, family's heart. Um, but... Oh, mis, mis, thyroid, sorry. thyroid disease is a very common cause of miscarriage. And then you see people who are depressed or have anxiety, and that's a very common symptom of, of thyroid disease. Um, my colleague Trudy Scott, who's a wonderful nutritionist, um, you need to follow her if you don't, she talks about food as medicine for people with anxiety and uses wonderful natural therapies, and she says that 50% of people who come to her with anxiety actually have Hashimoto's. Um, so like half of the people, if you know anybody that's anxious, this, is, this could be something that they have. Definitely if you know somebody that's struggling with their weight, with their energy levels, um, even with acne, irritable bowel syndrome, there's pretty good chance that they have Hashimoto's. It's one in four in people who are in our general population, just overall in the United States. And um, also, in the health-seeking population, um, that is going to be higher. So um, I, I don't remember the exact statistics now offhand, but it was way higher than that. So it was maybe anywhere from 40 to 50%. So people that are sick, like a large percentage of those people have Hashimoto's or they, they just don't know it. And it's, it's just awful. I know myself, I had the fatigue for almost a decade and it was like, I wasn't getting any answers and um, just very, very frustrating. So um, I'm going to do some math here. If we divide, there's 318 million people in the United States as of 2014. If we divide that by four, that's around 80 million people with Hashimoto's in the United States. And um, I bet you guys, majority of them don't know it. So we really have our work set out for us to spread awareness about this condition. And... Um, Really, really excited that we're making progress here. I really appreciate you guys being a part of this movement and making this happen and getting this message out into the world that you can recover from thyroid disease. Um, you've got you guys awesome comments. Um, let's see here. Um, I haven't been able to put it down since I've gotten it. That's awesome. Basha says, Dzień dobry pani, cześć pani Basiu. Um, I just got a message from, um, from Poland, from a Polish publisher, and they are also going to be translating Hashimoto's protocol into Polish. We already have Hashimoto's the root cause translated into Polish, Zapalenie Tarczycy Hashimoto, and I'm so excited that um, Hashimoto's protocol is going to be translated as well. I actually have to approve the title today, so... Um, I will be doing that after Facebook Live. I'll be looking at the cover and the title for the Polish version. And um, we're actually getting a lot of interest from other countries. So we just got the Czech Republic that was interested. And, and you know, this is all because, you guys, because it's ranking high on Amazon. And, and this is kind of how the system works. So now that the book is high on Amazon, all these people are like, oh, well, maybe people with Hashimoto's are relevant. And it's, it sounds bad, but it's like, this is how the system works. This is how we change the system, is to let our voices be heard, to let people know that we need change. 
Um, I would love for you guys, if you've got the book, if you could um, leave an honest review of it, what you think and what difference it's made in your life and what a difference um, Hashimoto's has been and what kind of treatment you did not receive or did receive that helped. Um, just because people need to know that, I feel like, um, you know, when I first was out in the world and talking about what I did, people would always ask, they'd say, oh, you know, what do you do, right? And I'm like, I'm a pharmacist. So the first question is always, which Walgreens do you work at? And then I'm like, well, no, I'm not that kind of a pharmacist. I, um, you know, I, I'm an author and a consultant and I work with people with Hashimoto's. And they were like, oh, bless you, that's such a rare condition. And I'm like, no, it's not. So it's something that we really need to get out there and, and spread the message. Um, Synthroid was the number one prescribed drug in three of the last, in two of the last three years. And most of the people taking Synthroid, unless they've had their thyroid removed or radioactive iodine, they actually have Hashimoto's, but they're not told. So we need to get this message out there and we need to get, you know, we need to get the protocols in everybody's hands and let them know that they can change their diet and feel significantly better, that they can take LDN, that they can, um, you know, take charge of their own health. So, Craig had a great question and Angie, how will this book help me when I'm diagnosed as hypothyroid and not Hashimoto's? So um, I would say 95 to 99% of people in the United States and in countries that add iodized salt, add, the, add iodine to the salt supply actually have hypothyroidism. Um, and I'm actually gonna read a little excerpt from the book. I think this is a great time to do that. And so um, I think I said it wrong. I was, I was trying to multitask, read and answer at the same time, but 99, 95 to 99% of people who have hypothyroid actually have Hashimoto's. So I'm gonna read a little excerpt from Hashimoto's protocol and then I wanna get to some more of your questions and then we'll read a little bit more. And thank you guys so much for all the likes and hearts and comments. Um, keep keep um, getting me some questions, would love to hear from you guys. If you got your book, if you started reading the book, um, what questions you have for me? If you know, if you've already read some stuff, um, you know how. If you want to kind of chat about it, I think that'd be really fun. So, I love having these chats. I always have. This is my um, boss lady cup. <laughs> um, my team got this for me, and um, I kind of like it. So, it's it's a lot of fun. I love um, sitting here with you guys, having some tea and chatting. So, do you have Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, or both? Hypothyroidism, by definition, is a clinical state of low levels of thyroid hormone in the body. The low levels of thyroid hormone can occur as a result of a variety of different reasons, such as iodine deficiency, surgical removal of the thyroid gland, excess use of thyroid-suppressing medications, pituitary suppression, or damage to the thyroid, such as physical or disease-induced. Hashimoto's causes most cases of hypothyroidism in the United States, in Canada, in Europe, and in other countries that add iodine to the salt supply. Depending on the source, estimates are that between 90 and 97 percent of those diagnosed with hypothyroidism in the United States actually have Hashimoto's. So 90 to 97 percent of you with a sluggish thyroid, underactive thyroid, you actually have Hashimoto's and um, you probably haven't been tested properly for it. Despite Hashimoto's being the underlying cause for hypothyroidism, after being diagnosed, many people are told that their thyroid is underactive, sluggish, or that they just have hypothyroidism. However, very few are told why their thyroid is no longer producing enough hormones or that they have an autoimmune condition. What they're, at, what they're usually told is that they'll just be fine as long as they remember to take their synthetic thyroid medications each morning for the rest of their lives. Most patients never think to ask the question, why is my immune system attacking my thyroid? Therefore, they never know to address the immune system imbalance and never get an opportunity to prevent or reverse the progression of the disease. The doctor is simply treating the symptoms and the patient is doing exactly what we have all been trained to do. Take the expert advice and try to move on with our lives. But there is another way. Many doctors simply don't test their patients for Hashimoto's, that's because the conventional medical model treats autoimmune thyroid disorders in the same way as it would treat someone with a nutrient deficiency induced thyroid disorder, someone with a congenital defect of the thyroid gland, someone who was born without a thyroid, or someone who had their thyroid removed or treated with radioactive iodine. 
Conventional medicine treats all of these conditions with synthetic thyroid hormones. But for all of those who suffer with Hashimoto's, this, this is a life-altering mistake. So um, I hope that gives you a little bit of understanding and perspective on Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism. And so generally, we're going to start with having um, Hashimoto's, which will attack the thyroid gland, and eventually that will lead to the thyroid gland to be destroyed. And um, that will lead to hypothyroidism. And most, you know, this is a big challenge for me because most people um, are discovered to have hypothyroid and Hashimoto's when a significant portion of their thyroid has been destroyed, even though they've been having symptoms for almost a decade. Um, and this was certainly my case. And so it's like once enough of the thyroid gland is damaged, that's when the traditional tests reveal that you have thyroid disease. And um, this is the TSH test. Thyroid antibodies can reveal thyroid disease, Hashimoto's, for 10 to 15 years before the TSH changes, but it's very frustrating because the current medical model tests you for TSH first, and only if that is elevated will they test you for antibodies. And it's so backwards because antibodies go up first, and then 10 years later, the TSH goes up later. It's, it's, it's really, really silly. It's like you know, I, I don't even have a good analogy for it because it, it's, it's so silly. <laughs> I'll have to think of one one day. Um, let's see. Great questions, you guys. Thanks so much for asking. People want to know what low-dose naltrexone is. So um, this is an immune-modulating medication. I cover it in Hashimoto's protocol. And it can get people from in Hashim with Hashimoto's and Graves' disease, disease inter intermission can be helpful for fertility as well. Um, Let's see, somebody said, let's get Isabella on Dr. Oz, buy a book. Yes, thank you so much, you guys. Um, it would be amazing to be on Dr. Oz and spread awareness about Hashimoto's. I don't know that he's ever done a segment on Hashimoto's, and I think it's, I think it's about time. Um, Kelly says, slowly making changes. Thanks for all of your work. Um, somebody asked, um, I live in Egypt. Will this book help? Absolutely. This book will absolutely help. Um, Amanda, is the audio version only on CD or is it available like the gold package audio download? Hope that makes sense. Amanda, so you can get the audible version if you go to Amazon. Um, so it's, it's kind of like an audio download that you could get for it and you can also buy it on CD. Um, so there's various options of how you can get the book. I hope that helps. I'm really, really excited about having that version because I know for some people it's... Um, you know, it's challenging to read a physical book, although many people love highlighting it and going through it and putting up um, little tabs like this on the side. So Andrea, thank you so much for sharing the video. I really appreciate it. Um, oh, awesome. Karen just got it on Audible for commutes. Yeah, that's going to be great because that, that's a really great way to read books, right? Uh, make, and make commutes much more um, well used, right? And... Um, Kelly said, I ordered the Thyroid Secret, and then people that ordered the Thyroid Secret also got a copy of the book with that. So the gold packages are shipping, yay. Um, I don't have one in here right now because we were just showing um, some friends yesterday, but you should expect to get like a 30 pound box. Like I'm not kidding you if you got the gold package. Um, if you got like the full um, gold package, you're gonna get a nice big package in the mail um, and that's gonna be coming between now and the 15th. So we just had a bunch of those um, printed and made and quality assurance checks. So they're all beautiful and, and working properly um, and they're shipping out as we as we speak. So I know they're, they've got a big assembly line going um, and that. Um, Tanya says, just bought your book from Ireland. Yay, so I hope that it helps in Ireland. Um, Jody wants to know endocrinologist or rheumatologist. So Jody, um, what we've seen is actually functional medicine doctors tend to be the best bet for people with thyroid disease and Hashimoto's because they really get to the underlying root causes and triggers. Rather than um, endocrinologists sort of just look at the structure and, thyroid and the function of the thyroid gland. Carmen, this would be awesome in Spanish. I would love for my aunt to read it. Carmen, we actually did get an offer for Spanish rights as well. Um, and so um, like I said, if you guys, as, as you know, we're creating this grassroots effort, this grassroots movement to really get Hashimoto's on the map, and thank you so much for being a part of that. Um, please let everybody you know about the book, let them know it's available on Amazon, and um, 
right now with it being number two, it's getting so much attention. And if it gets to number one, I know the attention will just skyrocket. So we've got like, um, you know, I just got a message from my publisher that the Czech Republic is, is excited about, you know, wanting to get the rights for the book. And we're starting to vet more foreign rights offers as they've seen that um, there is a demand and that there's a need for this information. So I would love for everybody with Hashimoto's in every country to have access to this. Um, with the, the root cause, we have it published in Romanian, we have it published in um, Polish, we have it published in German, and um, we're also getting a Spanish version later on this year, and we're also getting interest in that too. So it's really, really exciting because I feel like through this effort, um, and it's it's been it's been really exciting to watch and a bit of a s surprise, but but not because I know how many people need this information or are going to benefit from this information. Um, but you know, it, it's just like I, I feel like change is happening, you guys, and I'm really really excited. So, um, Stacy, does the Hashimoto's protocol contain the info from the root cause as well, or do I need to purchase both? I have Hashi's and my daughter was diagnosed at 11. So Stacy, um, the Hashimoto's protocol is very protocol based and it tells you like these are the steps you need to take, this is the food you need to eat, this is the um, kind of a grand overview of the theory and a grand overview of what's going on. Um, the root cause is very heavily focused on research and it's my story. So the Hashimoto's protocol is um, these are the steps you need to follow. So the books, I feel like they complement each other, but each of them is also a standalone. So you will get a full package of exactly what you need to do when you get the Hashimoto's protocol. I encourage you to get the root cause if, um, you know, since you're a doctor, you likely like, um, will want to nerd out in the research like I will. And um, all the research is in the root cause where the, the protocol has my clinical experience with patients and like kind of you know, a step-by-step -step approach, like this is what you need to do. Um, Janet says, I hooked up with one of your referred people, Optimistic, will receive your book tomorrow. That's fantastic, Janet. Um, we love your feedback as well. So we're always getting um, recommendations from patients into our practitioner database. Um, part of, part of um, you guys, just um, part of the whole movement of um, the thyroid pharmacist and what I'm, you know, want to create with all of you guys is get more access to more practitioners that know how to treat Hashimoto's, get more awareness for people with Hashimoto's, um, get people on the proper thyroid hormones, get the lifestyle interventions in their hands, and get people trained in the root causes of the disease. Um, part of that is empowering you guys with the things you can do on your very own, um, which are in the Hashimoto's protocol, of course, for um, natural desiccated thyroid and LDN. Um, for some of the advanced infections, you're going to need to work with a doctor on that. Um, and I also have information for doctors and practitioners and how to work with your practitioner in Hashimoto's protocol that's in the back of the book. Um, Geraldine says, magnesium and sleepy time tea help. That's awesome. Um, Rita says, stress help. So Rita, one of the things that's really, really helpful for stress is going to be taking a selenium supplement, and this is really, really great. Um, about 200 micrograms per day has been helped, uh, helps with anxiety, and then doing adrenal adaptogens. Um, I have a whole chapter in here about rebalancing the stress response. It's the second fundamental protocol. It's the adrenal protocol, and that's going to help you tremendously. Um, it starts on page 147, so pay special attention to that because I think that'll change your life. Amy said, got my book today. Jody said, I just, Carter, I just scheduled with Carter. Oh my gosh, Jody, you're going to love Carter. He is one of the kindest people I've ever met. Um, I actually, he was my pharmacist. He was my compounding consultant pharmacist when I was struggling with my health. So he actually advised me on my adrenals and helped me with, um, with getting my thyroid hormones optimized and um, all kinds of, you know, things. He's just a wonderful person. One one client wrote that he restored her um, oh, that he restored her hope and trust in doctors. Like he's just a really kind man. So um, and brilliant, brilliant. Um, besides besides being kind, so I really hope that you um, enjoy working with him and that you get um, that you get the help that you need. Um, 
and looks like somebody said the video is glitching. Uh oh. So let's see what I have going on here. Hopefully you guys are seeing that. Um, Mariana, how does one test for it properly? Thyroid antibody test, TPO antibodies, and TG antibodies. And Audra said um, the video glitches as more people join. Okay, that's good to know. So yay, we're getting more people joining. That's exciting. So um, thanks, you guys, for being here. I think um, we're really, really excited to get the word out about Hashimoto's. Um, Cheryl, what do you think of the ketogenic diet? So that's a really, really great question. Um, I'm going to read from Hashimoto's protocol. Let's see how the index works. Um, I just figured out that we have this because I actually do cover how to modify the diet to your needs. Okay, so diets. Dietary modifications, 274. Carbohydrate intake. Okay. If you're an athlete or find yourself more tired on the traditional paleo or autoimmune paleo diets, or if you have excess cortisol, elevated reverse T3, and hormonal abnormalities, you may benefit from getting more carbohydrates. Rather than filling up on processed grains, I recommend adding more real food carbohydrates such as pumpkin squash, um, sweet potatoes, plantains, bananas, apples, cassava, legumes, and grain-like seeds such as buckwheat, quinoa, and white rice, as long as you're not sensitive. Please note, some people feel tired, um, report feeling tired after starting a protein and fat-heavy diet like the paleo diet, but this is not always due to a reduced intake of carbohydrates. In fact, some people with autoimmune disease and Hashimoto's feel amazing on a strict, low-carb, ketogenic diet. If you're feeling tired on a diet that is mostly composed in fats and proteins, this could be due to low stomach acid, which leads to improper protein digestion. So um, my opinion on the ketogenic diet, and I talk a little bit more about that in Hashimoto's protocol, is that it can be... Um, it can be very, very helpful for some people, especially people with pain, people with um, any kind of brain fog. I know for me, when I went into ketosis, I um, got this mental clarity that I just hadn't remembered for years. Um, this diet is really great for weight loss. It can be very, very helpful. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is diets and your needs will change. So for me, I plateaued on the ketogenic diet and I had to switch out. And for some people, they do that. Other people might have a hard time adjusting to it. Um, and so one of the things to do is to make sure you take digestive enzymes um, with your protein-containing foods and also make sure that you're digesting fats properly. Because when we have Hashimoto's, a lot of us have issues with digestion. And so you want to get that dialed in because if you, um, if you go ketogenic, and you're not digesting proteins, and you're not digesting fats, and you're not eating any carbs, you're essentially starving yourself. And so that's one of the, the key modifications. And I talk about that in the advanced protocol. So I know this is more of an advanced question, um, and really, you guys, like pretty much all the questions that you have um, are going to be in this book. The way that I wrote it is um, taking all of my experience with clients over the last um, four years, as well as with my online community and people within my group program and trying to answer all everybody's questions from the first book into the second book. So I think this will be really, really helpful. Um, Deb says, I can't get the doc to test for antibodies. So you can actually order your own an antibody tests. Um, I have some resources in the back of Hashimoto's protocol. Um, and then we're also going to be putting them on the thyroid pharmacist website. Um, one of these days when I get back to writing my blog, I will be putting that on there for sure. So make sure you subscribe to that. Um, Gabriella, I got your book and bonuses. Thank you so much. It's very inexpensive on Amazon. Yes, actually, I forgot to mention that, you guys. It's like lower than it has been before. It's like $17, which is more than 40% off. Um, and I think they're doing some publication special or maybe because it's doing so well that they're um, trying to incentivize people. So if you haven't gotten your copy 
or if you're looking for Christmas presents, Mother's Day's presents, Easter presents, whatever, um, you can always, um, you can, um, you know, pick up your copy and it's uh, really discounted right now, which is exciting. Laura says, I love LDN. Um, let's see. CBD oil for anxiety, asks John. You know, um, I don't have too much experience with CBD oil. I'll have to survey the community. Um, the way, what I've seen it to be really helpful for is for pain, topically. And I've seen it to be very, very helpful for, um, for like muscle aches, muscle pains, and any kind of body stiffness. Um, for anxiety, we do have a pretty, pretty dialed in protocol with Hashimoto's protocol when you go through this in here. Um, one of the keys is blood sugar balance and selenium. So by the time you get through the adrenal um, protocol, your anxiety should be a thing of the past. So we see blood sugar balance, adrenal adaptogens, and selenium, and that pretty much um, zaps anxiety to, um, to a nil and, and caffeine um, elimination as well. So that's in the adrenal protocol. I, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I used to be like, I, well, I used to be normal. No, I used to be very, very calm and laid back. And then, um, and then I just became, um, right around the time I actually met my husband, I just became really anxious and started having panic attacks. Um, it was really quite debilitating. Like I embarrassed him in front of people before because I would have like, like serious, like panic attacks and I'd be paranoid and I'd be freaking out about things. Um, Actually, um, I would say I had a slight paranoia because of the anxiety when I was going through um, through Hashimoto's, and of course I didn't know that I was going through it. I just felt pretty pretty awful and suspicious of the entire world. Um, but once I got everything dialed in, like once I got selenium on board, got my blood sugar in balance, I was like, okay, now I'm cool and relaxed. And um, you know, everybody on my team is like, you're always so calm. You never get you never get like worked up. And I don't. I'm just you know, that's my personality. It's pretty chill. And for a while, I didn't think I was that person. I thought I was like an anxious person. I thought I was, you know, like, like that was me. And, and it wasn't. It was, and it was preventing me from being the person I was meant to be because I was anxious in social situations. I was anxious in meetings at work. And I like, I remember I would like, um, I would have to meet with clients who were on taking a lot of medications and had a lot of health challenges and I would be me, a doctor, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a behaviorist, a social worker. And I would be like so nervous to like say anything throughout the entire meeting where, um, you know, of course the only thing that got me to talk was because I was advocating for my clients and I was like, okay, this is a bad drug interaction or this is like a concern that is going on. And so I, um, yeah, that used to be me. And anxiety, like you can you can get rid of it, that baby for sure with um, with the adrenal protocol. Oh, Darcy, this is such a great question. Um, um, and somebody said I found out your book before I went on medications, and it's been a godsend. So great to hear, Darcy. Why go wheat free if blood tests say I'm not allergic to wheat nor have celiac? <gasps> Ah, oh, that's such a great question. Let's see if we can get that out of the Hashimoto's protocol. Um, so one of these days I'm going to know when like where stuff is on the pages, but right now I'm still getting used to it. But I've surveyed over 2,232 people with Hashimoto's. I initially started, I got the idea of doing surveys with my clients and then I, you know, I started getting a couple of hundred people and you know, got some results and they were about 90% um, people said they felt better with um, celiac disease or with, with gluten free. Now, when I um, was like, okay, great, I'll just, I just need to collect more information, right? And then I realized from my clients and I'm like, then I realized I could do this with my community and my online community because that's a lot of, a lot of you guys. Um, and I just asked people with Hashimoto's and 88% felt better gluten-free. 88% of people with Hashimoto's felt better gluten-free. Um, and only like historically, like looking at all the science, because that's what I do all day every day, is um, only between 1.5 and 15% of people with Hashimoto's will have celiac disease. Um, and in this population, only 3.5% had been diagnosed with celiac. So that means 
about 85% of the people that felt better gluten-free did not have celiac and did not have thyroid, um, did not have, um, did not have reactions to gluten that were measured in blood. Um, Gail says ordering the book. So glad to hear that. I hope it really helps you. Um, let's see here. I've read both Hashimoto's protocol and root cause, says Jim. Very important if it helped immensely. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, Jim, if you can share the information with um, everybody you can, let them know that there is a way to recover their health. And also um, make sure that you leave an honest review on Amazon just um, so that other people, um, you know, can know that this is a trusted source. Um, you know, honestly, you guys, I think the paranoia and the anxiety, I don't know if this was a part of the disease, but it's definitely something that kept me from getting well. Um, and it kind of, like, it just made me suspicious of people. Like, I was suspicious of doctors. I was suspicious of people online um, and all these people. And I had this, like, preconceived notion that people were, like, out to get me and take advantage of me. Um, and even people like, um, you know, like people that I'm friends with today, I like, I would see their stuff online before I knew them. And I was like, I don't know if this person's legit. Like, I don't know if I could trust them. Are they just trying to scam me and you know, whatnot. Um, and I have to tell you guys, like, like the people that are out and like trying to, um, you know, write books and, and, and have clinics. Like these are people that like, actually like I would say like out of everybody that I've met, 99% of them are like 100% genuine and they really care. Like their calling in life and their passion is to be a healer like mine is. And that's how, that's how like, that's the most important thing for them is to help people take care of their health. Um, Dr. Alan Christensen was the very first people that I met um, from, you know, the online doctor community. And I was just like, I didn't know him beforehand, and I, I, I kind of suspected he was a nice guy, but didn't really know, and I wasn't, you know, I was like, hmm, what's his motivation, right? And then I met him in person, and he was, he's like the most genuine, caring person I've, I've like, have yet to meet, and, um, you know, definitely somebody that's been out there um, for patients and always, um, always trying to help people with every, everything that he's doing. He's like, that's the focus of his mind. He's become a dear friend, so... Um, Whenever you guys leave reviews, lets people know that like this stuff is legit. This stuff does work. Um, I had almost a year before I went gluten free because I didn't think it was going to work. So there, there's a lot of I don't know naysayers for whatever reason, maybe just skepticism that um, they'll say, oh well, this gluten free diet's not going to work, and then that prevented me from getting better. Cassie says, Dr. Wentz, you're truly amazing. I'm so thankful for all your hard work and research and for sharing your story. Through your documentary, my husband finally understands. I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so glad to hear that you're getting your husband on board. Um, that's so ex important to have a supportive partner. I know I do, and I wouldn't be able to be here with you guys if I didn't have his support, if I didn't have my mom's support, if I didn't have um, people in my life that were here for me. Um, Janet, checking pulse after eating. Yeah, that could be one of the helpful methods for detecting food sensitivities. If your pulse goes up by um, more than 10 points after you eat something, that can be one way. The more effective, the most effective thing though, is doing an elimination diet. And we go through that in Hashimoto's protocol. The, um, the fundamental protocols actually onboard you through um, the different types of dietary protocols. I think this is time to read from that. Um, okay. Let's see. And then we'll go to questions and then root cause reflection, what was going on in your life before you got sick. Fundamental healing. In a nutshell, we will focus on utilizing food as medicine. So the book is divided into two sets of protocols. The fundamental protocols that teach you what you can do on your own to, to feel your best and feel well. And the advanced protocols are things you could gen you generally want to have a practitioner work with you on. 80% of people will feel significantly better with the advanced, uh, with the fundamental protocols and may be able to go into remission and about 20% will need the more advanced protocols. So fundamental healing. In a nutshell, we will focus on utilizing food as medicine or food pharmacology as I like to call it, coupled with targeted supplements and lifestyle changes that restore health during the fundamental protocols. The fundamental protocols will introduce you to targeted interventions that will be modified along the way adjusting your supplements and nutrition within each of the three phases of the protocol. You'll be introduced to the three diets, root cause intro, 
root cause paleo and autoimmune to go with the protocols. While each of the protocols is distinct, they do have the following core concepts in common. They limit reactive and processed foods like gluten, dairy, soy, caffeine, and sugar. They're rich in vegetables. Meals should be 25% meat and 75% vegetables to start with, and then you can adjust. And you should aim for six cups of veggies and fruit each day. You could do that with, um, generally with smoothies. Um, they stress the inclusion of foods low on the glycemic index to help balance blood sugar and adrenal issues, which are often implicated in Hashimoto's. This includes limiting fruit to fewer than two servings per day. This is going to be in the beginning. Um, once you guys get through these protocols, um, hopefully you'll rebalance your body and you'll be able to introduce more foods back in. So for me, um, for me, I'm gluten and dairy free and I avoid nuts. But um, other than that, like I eat fruit and I, I eat, you know, like rice and grains whenever I want. I don't eat them um, a ton of them, like it's not like I'll have like a binge of, you know, rice and fruit all day or anything like that. I eat balanced, but um, I don't have reactions to foods anymore um, other than gluten and dairy, which I avoid like a plague. <laughs> they stress, um, they recommend that you eat a variety of foods and rotate them. If you have a leaky gut, eating the same foods over and over, no matter how healthy, will lead to the sensitivity to those foods. I learned that the hard way. Rotating foods is an excellent way to prevent new food reactions and to prove, improve nutrient dense sufficiency. They emphasize the importance of nutrient density. Aim to get most of your foods from organic meat and veggies, green smoothies, green juices, bone broth, liver fermented foods, and gelatins. They suggest limiting seaweed due to its immune modulating abilities and high iodine content. They remind you to eat foods rich in good fats to support hair, skin, and blood sugar. So um, this is part of the fundamental protocols. Um, this is just kind of an outline of it. I will have more, I have more tailored guidelines for each protocol, as well as you know, sample recipes and what to swap things out for. Um, Donna said, I had no idea that low stomach acid makes you tired. Oh my goodness. Um, when I addressed my low stomach acid, it was like, Eureka, I, like I had woken up after like, I was like sleeping beauty. <laughs> Um, I was like, wow, this really makes a difference. When you support your, your low stomach acid and um, you're digesting your foods for once, it's amazing what kind of energy you can have. Um, Jim, elimination of both processed foods and gluten are quite helpful in reduction of issues from sluggishness and lethargy, better energy, not to mention better digestion. Um, Jim, that's so true, and thank you so much for sharing your experience. Um, I know some of you guys might be watching and kind of wondering if this stuff is legit. So yes, this stuff does work. Um, the Hashimoto's protocol, this um, has been piloted with over a thousand people and we have fantastic results. Um, if I could find the page in the book, I'll share them with you. So we have, of course, 97% of people feel significantly more educated about their condition. And then we see 81% resolution in depression, 80% reduction in stomach pain. We see joint pain, fatigue, TSH, acid reflux, brain fog, irritability, forgetfulness, antibodies, palpitations, energy, hair loss, all these things improve. So um, this is something that you'll see with going through the, the protocols. Um, Edna, thank you so much for sharing this. Nice to see you. Um, Laura, can I follow Hashimoto's protocol if I have MTHFR? Yes, and we actually have, um, da, 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 we have an MTHFR protocol in here too. And so um, Hashimoto's protocol is tailored to as though you actually did have an MTHFR gene mutation and we have specific things you need to do in there to support that gene mutation. So I've got like foods and nutrients to support yourself. So you're in the right place, absolutely. Rita, what does high reverse T3 mean? Usually this means that you're under significant amount of stress for whatever reason, and so your body is um, blocking your T3 receptors and it's trying to shut you down. A lot of times this is an adrenal issue, so this is something that can be rebalanced with the adrenal protocols. Um, a lot of, um, you know, I do things a little bit differently just because I focus specifically on Hashimoto's, and a lot of um, doctors utilize reverse T3 and they test a lot for it with people who have, um, you know, um, some like thyroid hormone resistance or whatnot. But um, what I found in Hashimoto's, it's, it's usually elevated reverse T3 is, um, is adrenal issues and I just address adrenals and then that gets in balance. Geraldine says, I've ordered your books and shared your mission with my coworkers. 
so amazing. And, you know, I really do think this is all of our mission. You guys are a part of this mission to change how thyroid disease is treated because I know most of you have are not getting the answers that you needed because I know I didn't and I, I tried and I was like a, I was a healthcare worker. Um, I had access to the best doctors and I still wasn't getting the answers I needed. I was told to try antidepressants and that there was nothing really that they could do for me. They were, a, um, everybody that I've ever met was super kind. Don't get me wrong, but they just didn't know what they didn't know. And um, so I wanted, I wanted to change the system. And so here we are today with all of you guys and um, it's exciting to see some of your success stories. Charity says, I heart you. I'm learning so much from you. Thank you. Um, Charity, right back at you. I'm so glad to share this. And I can't wait for you to, see, to be a success story. Um, Debbie says, Candida infection is a cause of most internal problems. Debbie, you're very much right. So Candida is oftentimes, I would say almost in every case, an issue with Hashimoto's. Now, um, some people just have Candida. Other people have a multitude of other things as well going on. Um, Blood sugar balance and adrenals help my anxiety tremendously. Donna, thanks so much for sharing that. So um, I know somebody was asking about that earlier, and I really hope that you utilize these strategies because, you know, let's face it, like the, the alternatives out there are benzodiazepine drugs, and, um, you know, I'll use my pharmacist card here, but they are addictive and habit-forming. Um, and I have to tell you guys just a devastating story. Um, I met a man on a flight from um, from New York to Los Angeles a few years back, and he was a, a sweetheart, and I had a chance to sit next to him, and his wife had just died by suicide, and um, the benzodiazepines were involved, and um, he told me that the benzos were a part of her decline, and um, this unfortunately happens. The drugs are habit-forming, and people can overdose on them intentionally or not, and um, there's alternatives, and you know, um, you don't have to feel depressed, you don't have to feel anxious. Um, if you follow the, the things that are in Hashimoto's protocol, you're gonna balance that out, you're gonna feel significantly better. 80% um, of you guys are gonna feel significantly better with depression and anxiety, and you know, if you're ever thinking that your mood is just forever, like that's, that's the nature of the beast, mood is temporary, 100% of the time, you can get rid of depression, anxiety, no matter what you've been through in life, no matter what kind of traumas you've had, no matter what kind of pains you've been through, no matter what's going on right now, um, this is something that is temporary. And um, I urge you to get the right help um, and to, um, you know, to take a step in the right direction and, and save yourself. Um, Rita, great question. Can thyroid problems cause mental illness? They can. Um, Rita, I've had clients, I personally had panic attacks and I had depression that was undiagnosed and that was likely because of my thyroid disease. Um, I had that for um, my freshman year in college and undergrad right after I got um, mono and I was bedridden and just, you know, I barely passed some of my classes because I was sleeping all the time and nobody knew, of course. I, you know, I was severely depressed and my parents took me to a psychologist. They didn't know what to do with me. Um, and I struggled with that for, for a long time. And now I, I realize and now I, I know that that was my thyroid. Um, I was exposed to Chernobyl when I was a child and that likely set my thyroid on a roller coaster um, until I was then exposed to Epstein-Barr virus, which made it worse. And 100% like... Um, once I got things dialed in, you guys, it's like I, you know, my mood is so stable. I'm calm. I'm collected. I'm just, you know, of course, of course I have bad days, but it, it, it's nowhere like a glimpse of how the dark days I used to have completely gone. Um, I've had clients who were misdiagnosed with depression, bipolar disorder, panic attacks, um, obsessive compulsive disorder. And I've even had clients who were diagnosed with psychosis and hospitalized, um, borderline personality disorder. This is another misdiagnosis when people have thyroid disease. Um, the borderline personality is somebody who's like up and down and they're, they see things in black and white. Well, guess what Hashimoto's does? It, it makes your thyroid hormones go up and down. Um, if you guys know people with mental illness, this might actually be a root cause for them. Um, and to be quite honest with you, the fundamentals in here are going to be helpful for, for anybody um, 
with mental illness, whether or not they have a thyroid issue as well, because they focus on the fundamental self-care strategies like balancing your blood sugar, which um, none of us are taught. I certainly didn't learn about that in pharmacy school. Um, thank you for that question. Desiree, what can I do to alleviate muscle fatigue and sickness? Um, ordered your book, can't wait to get it. Desiree, um, magnesium citrate, so that's one of my favorite supplements that can be really, really helpful for that. Um, really helpful for stomach cramps, um, really helpful for fatigue, stiffness, um, really helpful for menstrual cramps. Um, I'd love to see how you do when you incorporate that. Um, magnesium citrate can produce um, somewhat of a laxative effect, which may be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you're looking for. So if you have diarrhea um, and it makes it worse, then you want to switch to magnesium glycinate, which also will work. How much selenium should be taken? Roxanne wants to know. 200 micrograms per day of selenium has been shown to reduce thyroid antibodies by about 50% in about three months. We've also seen that um, anxiety tends to reduce that hair loss recedes, um, so people stop losing hair, they feel better, they have more energy, and um, overall selenium is helpful for Graves' disease, for Hashimoto's, for postpartum thyroid issues, so this is something that can be really, really helpful for anybody that's suffering with a thyroid condition. Um, anxiety has been huge for me, my shmish, that's a pretty name says, so yeah, I hopefully, um, this is a very, very common symptom of Hashimoto's when the thyroid gland is attacked by the immune system. This sends thyroid hormone to the bloodstream that causes anxiety. Ah, so let, Sherry says, selenium makes me itch. Does that mean I don't need it? So Sherry, a couple of things. Um, one of them, it could be that you have the um, CBS mutation and I have a protocol for that in here. So sulfury things and things that tend to... Um, upregulate a certain pathway may be problematic for you. Another type of thing to consider would be the form of the selenium. So I like selenium methionine from Pure Encapsulations. So just to make sure you rule that out, because um, sometimes it could be the fillers that make you itch. And another thing to consider, um, very small percentage, less than 5% of people with Hashimoto's have um, an iodine deficiency, but some of them do. And then in that case, taking an iodine supplement with the selenium can be helpful um, to to balance that out, and then you'll be able to tolerate that. Donna says, panic attacks are horrible. Thanks for spreading about how awful it is. Nice to know you're, we're not alone. Donna, um, so sorry to hear that you're going through that. I know I, I know they're not fun. I had plenty of them um, pretty much before I got married until, um, until I got into remission in 2012, 13. Um, I, I, you know, actually they, they went away before 2013, but it was just like kind of gradual. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I haven't had one since, yeah, I can't even remember how far back, maybe 2000, 2011 was probably the last one. So, um, that this is absolutely something that can go away. It's not a part of you. It's, um, one of the symptoms that you're going to shed, that's going to help you reveal the true you once you, um, get these lifestyle changes adjusted. Tara says, depression is bad for me and fatigue. Um, I hear you, Tara. Um, depression and fatigue are awful. I've been there. Um, the good news is with um, Hashimoto's protocol, 81%, we see an 81% reduction in depression. That's actually one of the first things that improves. And then fatigue is another big symptom that improves as well. Um, thiamine, um, 600 milligrams per day is, is kind of like my miracle nutrient that can help alleviate fatigue in, in as short as three days. Um, let's see. Natalie says, my 11-year-old son, TSH, is hypo. He has low iron, MTHFR gene mutation, daily headaches, cold intolerance, anxiety, but his antibodies are normal and the doctors will not treat him. Um, so I would recommend working with a functional doctor that's trained in pediatrics because you need to get um, you, you need to get your son treated properly and um, potentially you could prevent um, a lifetime or, you know, like being 13, 12, 13 is hard enough. You don't want this on top of it and this can be balanced out. Rita mentioned um, bigger mental issues. You mentioned paranoia. So yeah, um, so part of thyroid disease, um, when going back to my safety theory, 
Um, the way that our body works, it's always trying to protect us. So our body is not fighting against us. It's trying to keep us alive, right? And part of that is adjusting thyroid hormone function when, we, when the body feels that there's a threat. In the beginning stages of when the body is feeling a threat, it's actually more beneficial to be hyper vigilant. Um, and so in the first few years of Hashimoto's, we have this attack on the thyroid gland that breaks down thyroid hormones and puts them into the bloodstream, makes us more anxious, makes us more irritable, hyper vigilant. Therefore, if we were um, under a threat, we're more likely to survive because of that hyper vigilance, right? Of course, this is a genius design or evolution, whatever you want to call it. Um, that helped our, our ancestors survive for many, many years. But now in modern times, um, you know, the things we perceive as threats are not actual threats to us, and our bodies still don't know how to interpret those signs. Um, so this is something that's super, um, super common in people, and it makes perfect sense. Um, another person was asking about Graves' disease, if, um, if this book will help Graves' disease. So it's specifically for Hashimoto's. Um, the protocols, most of the protocols will apply to Graves, though. Um, the only protocol would not apply would be the optimizing thyroid hormone. So in Graves' disease, we actually want to suppress thyroid function. In Hashimoto's, we want to boost it. So that's the main difference. But, you know, I have protocols for the triggers. Like, for example, H. pylori is a very common trigger in both Hashimoto's and Graves' disease. When we eliminate it, we can go into remission. And all of those um, protocols would still apply. So... Um, getting Hashimoto's protocol, if you have Graves' disease, will likely help you as well. Um, and you'll also want to work on suppressing your thyroid hormones via um, herbs, low-dose naltrexone, or another means. And you can suppress them temporarily. And then um, once your body goes back into balance, you'll go into remission. You'll be able to stop suppressing them. Kelly said, I received my book. Can't wait to dive in. I'm so excited to hear that. Dr. Stacy said just ordered both books, so excited. Dr. Stacy, I hope that they really help you and your family um, and your patients as well. So I'm excited that you're here because you're going to help a ton of people. Jason says, I'm a man with Hashimoto. So um, hi, Jason. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'm so sorry that you're struggling with this. And um, for men, it can present a little bit differently. Um, and so in a lot of times, men might have more problems with um, growing facial hair or problems with their libido. Um, all of the protocols would apply to Hashimoto's protocol, uh, all of the uh, protocols would also apply that are in Hashimoto's protocol to help you. Um, so they're not gender specific. Um, Rachel, I have been diagnosed with Graves and do not have Hashi's antibodies, but I'm gaining so much weight and losing hair. Is it possible I have both? I'm on antithyroid meds and beta blockers too. Um, so potentially you might have both or it could be the um, thyroid, antithyroid meds that are blocking it. So it's difficult to say. Um, I would encourage you to work with a functional medicine doctor to consider LDN and really educating yourself about some of the things you can do to take back your health. Um, I do have some, a lot of the root causes there very much apply to, Hash, uh, to Graves' disease and Hashimoto's as well. Mish says, you are describing me, was always so chilled, became paranoid and anxious. Yeah, so, um, you know, Mish, that's a nature of the beast, um, and this is not who you are. This is something that you can overcome, um, and, um, you know, starts with trusting yourself, and starts with, like, you know, if, if you don't believe that anything in Hashimoto's protocol will work, just look at it as an experiment and just say, okay, I'm going to give it 30 days. I'm going to try it. If it doesn't work, I could always go back to how I was doing things, right? And um, just take it as an experiment and see life as an experiment. That, that, was, that helped me to um, I overcome some of the, the mistrust I had and some of the paranoia I had to, um, you know, I felt like people were trying to take advantage of me or people were trying to, like, um, were out to get me or trying to scam me, which, which of course, is very, very um, present in our world. But at the same time... Um, there are genuine people that want to help, and um, Hashimoto's protocols do help, and they can help you recover your health. So, um, you know, be an experiment, um, be a scientist, and allow yourself to explore. And 
you know, if it doesn't work, you can always go back to how you were. You can return the book to Amazon. You could say, hey, this didn't work for me, but um, have a pretty good feeling it's going to work for you. So something, to something tells me, um, a, lot of, a lot of my clients and um, a lot of my readers over the last four years, so this stuff is definitely legit, you guys. S says, hearing all the stories have put me at ease because I thought I was going crazy for some time and now I know I'm not alone. So thank you for all your dedication to helping others. Oh, my pleasure, As I'm so glad to hear that. Um, I know it can feel so alone. I know I was like, I don't know, I was like 27 when I was diagnosed and none of my friends were sick, none of my coworkers were sick and I was just like, huh, what's going on here? And so it's wonderful to have a sense of community. It's an important part of healing. Um, and I'm really glad to have this community with you guys and all of you just taking action are really inspiring me um, and um, I love seeing your success stories and I love seeing how just little things are changing for you because that that's going to spark um, you know it, it's it's something that you're going to start change, making small changes and you're going to start seeing improvements and this is going to be a snowball effect so like one small change improvement begets another um, and so be patient with yourself, like you didn't develop the condition overnight and you're not going to recover overnight, like let your body heal, like be kind to yourself, be patient with yourself during this process. Melissa says, hi Melissa, nice to see you again. This is the first time I asked for a copy of my thyroid results, so I don't know how to read or understand them, don't know what is bad or good. Melissa, congratulations on taking charge, like I'm really, really proud of you. Everybody should be asking for a copy of their thyroid results. So. Um, what you want to do is you want to make your t make sure your TSH is between 0.5 and 2. That's when most people feel best with it. Free T3 and free T4 should be in the top part of the range. Thyroid antibodies should be under 35. Um, and I hope that helps. Um, I do have more information on that in Hashimoto's protocol. And I should mention, if you guys order it on Amazon, if you go to getbook.at slash protocol, and the link is here in the description of this live event, um, if you guys order the Hashimoto's protocol via there, um, I'll also give you some exciting bonuses. Um, if you go to thyroidpharmacist.com slash Amazon, that will give you access to all of these fun and exciting bonuses, including a whole ebook on thyroid medications and how to interpret your thyroid test results. So let me see if I could chat this. Okay, I just chatted it to you guys. Hopefully that didn't um, close down the live event. Okay, I'm still here. Good. Lose, what do you think about the low FODMAP diet? Lose the low FODMAP diet. So um, in my research, about 40% of people with Hashimoto's feel better with it, um, and it helps them reduce their thyroid antibodies. Now, the people that it's specific for are people with SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, um, which can be a root cause and a trigger. I do cover um, the SIBO how to I don't know if you have it, how to test for it, and how to treat it, including the low FODMAP diet and the advanced protocols of Hashimoto's protocol. Um, Tara, I'm in severe burning urethral pain and no relief. Um, Tara, one of the things you want to do is look into low oxalate diet. Um, I do have that in Hashimoto's protocol. I also have a blog on it on Thyroid Pharmacist. That can be a potential thing. And also, of course, get tested for a UTI. Carol. What causes thyroid nodules to get them to go away? So, thyroid nodules could be because of estrogen dominance, they could be because of toxins, they could be because of an autoimmune process or infections within the thyroid gland. What I'm really excited to share is um, my book is not called um, Nodules Protocol, but actually all the protocols will help you get rid of nodules too. So um, I didn't know that when I first came out with um, Hashimoto's The Root Cause and started working with clients, but I've had quite a few readers of clients let me know that all the protocols help them in getting rid of their thyroid nodules. Um, I keep talking, I just need to, you know, I can't wait to get back to blogging and writing up um, client stories and um, your success stories because all of you guys, I'm hoping you're, I'm seeing you take action. And um, one of the things I'd love for you to do is once you get a copy of the book and start implementing the protocols, if you could share your story, um, I'll share it on my blog or if you want to just share it with social media, wherever you want to share it, just let people know how things are working. Um, one woman shared five consecutive ultrasounds with me of when she started doing cha lifestyle changes. And so she, um, she started taking selenium, she reduced, she was on the autoimmune paleo diet, and then she also um, 
treated H. pylori and blastocystis hominis, and that eliminated her thyroid, anti uh, her thyroid um, antibodies and her thyroid nodules. And we do have consecutive um, ultrasounds, so I'll do ha I will have to post those. Um, Candice, is it safe to take turmeric every day? Are there more benefits from powder versus supplement? Um, I talk about turmeric in the liver protocol, so this is one of my wonderful fundamental foods. This is really, really great for most people, unless you're sensitive to it. Um, there are some people that may have an adverse reaction. There's always that possibility. Um, you can do it in powder. You do want to add some pepper to it because that stretches its life in the body. The other option is to get it with um, inside of a supplement that has either bioparine or another type of um, curcumin tur turmeric stretcher. So there's different liposomal formulations that help to get it stretched out in the body. Russell, thank you so much for sharing this. I really appreciate it. Oh, I'm so sorry, Tara. Um, um, I'm so sorry, Tara lost her dad because of benzos. It, it's just, you know, I'm so sorry for your loss. And it just angers me so much that people are placed on these medications when there are natural things that they can do to um, rebalance the anxiety and get rid of it. Um, Jamie says, hi from Charlotte. I'm so encouraged by the Thyroid Secret Series. I'm not crazy. Yes, reading your new book now. Already started the autoimmune paleo diet and it makes a huge difference. Jamie, congratulations on taking action. I'm so proud of you. Um, I hope that you will um, be one of the success stories and I hope that you'll share your story far and wide and let people know that this is possible and you can get better. Um, Gwen, I just found out that my antithyroid peroxidase is greater than 1,000. What does this mean? Please help. Um, so the higher the number of antiperoxidase antibodies, the more aggressive the attack is on your thyroid gland. And generally, we want them under 35. So at this point, um, that's usually an indication that you have an autoimmune attack on the thyroid and you need to do something about it. So um, you can absolutely lower and eliminate your thyroid antibodies. So I've seen people in the 10,000 range get rid of them. Um, Hashimoto's protocol, I know I keep talking about it, but this is everything that you need to do from my clinical experience and research in taking back your health. Um, Gluten-free diet, selenium is a really, really great place to start. And Jolly, how to address prediabetes PCOS. Uh, so um, really cool, you guys. Um, I talk about myo-inositol in the book. Um, this is a nutrient um, you can get in a supplement form, and it's helpful for PCOS, diabetes, and hypothyroidism. So it can actually reduce TSH. It's one of the very few supplements that can do that that's not a glandular. Um, so um, that's one thing to do, and blood sugar balance. So adrenal protocol is going to be like a really big deal for you, and I would love, love, love for you to get Hashimoto's protocol and do before and after for me of, um, of what you were like um, when you started the adrenal protocol and then what you were after. So like how is your thyroid antibodies, how is your PCOS, how is your prediabetes, because I'm willing to... Um, uh, make a small bet that if you follow the protocols, you'll see improvements um, across the board and you'll feel significantly better. Um, Desiree, I told my th therapist I thought I was bi bipolar. I was told maybe cyclothymic. Yes, that is a common thyroid symptom. So um, Hashimoto's can make you, make you feel like that in rapid cycling bipolar. Um, and um, then she took out her big DSM and we discovered that I could not be diagnosed as such because I have a thyroid condition because thyroid conditions can cause similar mood issues. So Desiree, it sounds like you actually have a really great doctor, a really great therapist. Um, unfortunately, a lot of us, um, we're missed. We're, a lot of thyroid patients are given labels of mental illness um, and which um, there's nothing I feel like, you know, it shouldn't be stigmatized, but unfortunately it is. And then they feel like they think that they need to take psychiatric medications forever. And, um, and you know, thyroid hormones are gentle creatures. They get us back in balance. You just, you want to make sure you get the right amounts and the right kinds. Um, psychiatric medications, not so much. So psych medications are going to be, um, and they're going to be devastating. They can cause blood sugar issues. They can cause addiction. They can cause withdrawals, they can cause like depersonalization, make you feel like you're, you're not human anymore. Um, oh, one popular question. Um, 
Is that a bong in the background? No, um, I do live in Colorado, but that is not a bong. Um, this is right next to the Hashimoto's protocol. This is a mortar and pestle. Let me see if I can grab that. This is um, a pharmacist tool, so for making medications, so for compounding medications. Um, this, I have quite a few of these. I have a collection of mortar and pestles in all kinds of different colors. I started collecting them in pharmacy school and get them for graduation gifts and um, all kinds of things like that. So, um, so just so you guys know, um, the mortar pestle is not a bong, even though I do live in Colorado. So um, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, let's see. Sarah, will this help if you had thyroid disease? but had thyroidectomy, absolutely. This will be very, very helpful for you. Amy, I feel like I have, like Hashimoto's has gotten worse since taking Zoloft. I've gained so much weight. Um, I want to wean off. Um, can I just reduce a little bit at a time? Um, you're gonna want to make sure that you're in balance first before you start weaning off. Um, and I also recommend that you look into my dear friend, um, Dr. Kelly Brogan's work, because that's, she's a psychiatrist that helps people get off of, um, um, you know, psychiatric meds. She does amazing work. Um, so everything in Hashimoto's protocol is going to be really helpful for you. And you also want to get um, Dr. Kelly Brogan's um, amazing book, A Mind of Her Own. And she's, she's the guru on that. Um, Mana says, uh, Mana, thanks so much for sharing. Lisa, Hashimoto's nodules, prediabetes, positive ANA. I can't wait to receive my book. Ordered it Tuesday night. Thank you for your replies. Um, I'm so glad you're here. You're in the right place. I would love to see Hashimoto's, nodules, prediabetes, positive ANA go away. Um, if I had to place my bets, I'll say the prediabetes is going to go away first, um, then the positive ANA, um, then the Hashimoto's, and then the nodules. Um, so the nodules take a little bit longer to resolve. Um, if you take thyroid hormones, they actually resolve a little bit quicker. So um, I'm placing my bets. Would love to hear from you once you start implementing changes to see um, what symptoms you can shed. Val. Oh, let's see. I missed Safika. My 13-year-old has hypo but not hash. She's taking WP thyroid, trying to help him feel better and trying to figure out what the root cause is. Safika, um, he's really, really lucky to have you, and I hope that you work with um, somebody who's comprehensive to help you figure that out. Um, I do have a listing of potential root causes in Hashimoto's protocol, and I hope that will help guide you. Val, my Hashi's all over the map, and doctors here, our surrounding areas are not willing to listen. Um, I can't find a doctor who prescribed LDN. Um, ordering your book Saturday. So Val, I hope the book really helps you. Um, one strategy is to contact your local compounding pharmacy and ask them who um, the local LDN uh, prescribing doctors are that know how to use it. And while you're at it, ask them which doctors per prescribe natural desiccated thyroid because sometimes that can help. Um, Melissa, I'm a man with Hashimoto's. Our lower back pain's part of it. I don't have kidney issues. Potentially that could be, um, you know, really pain throughout the body can be um, a symptom. Uh, Regina, is LDN a long-term treatment? So it can be. It can be something that's used to just get into balance um, and to get into remission. And for some people, if they don't address their root causes, they may need to be on it forever. Other people can successfully wean off of it as part of a comp comprehensive protocol. Um, you know, other people use it preventatively. So I plan on using it preventatively um, for preventing postpartum thyroid issues because, um, you know, women with a history of Hashimoto's, you know, I'm going to do everything in my power basically to prevent any kind of thyroid issues after um, pregnancy. And so um, that's going to be one of the strategies I utilize. My friend Shannon Garrett, um, she's an LDN advocate and she talks about how much she has benefited from LDN and she says, you know, I won't let anybody take it from my, my cold dead hands or, you know, so she really loves it. Um, I, I would suggest, you know, give it a try, keep an open mind and see if it works for you. Is soy bad for Hashimoto's? Yes. So um, soy is one of those foods that's going to be reactive in your body. But the interesting thing is it's not going to be like stomach reactions. A lot of times it's going to be anxiety that it causes. Um, so and it increases thyroid antibody. So you do want to get off of that. Um, Carlene, 
Thoughts on high antibodies despite eating clean, pretty close to AIP. Carlene, so um, yeah, this is something I see very, very commonly um, when people hit a plateau. And I recommend, um, that's why the 90-day plan is 90 days. And if you don't get into remission by that point, then that means that you have um, to go through the advanced protocols. Um, and what I found in my clients who do not go into remission within three months of a clean diet is that they usually have a gut infection. About 80% of them will have that. Um, or they have a significant toxin, more than 95% more than 95 will have that. And, um, and they also have adrenal and traumatic issues. And so these are all covered in the advanced protocols. Let me tell you guys what's all in here. So part one is getting to know Hashimoto's and the root cause approach. Part two is the fundamental protocols. So liver, adrenal, and gut protocols. These will take you through how to rebalance your body within um, your, you know, really within your own home without the need for medications from your doctors. And part three goes into the advanced protocols, which go into optimizing thyroid hormones, which is something you do with a doctor, mastering nutrition and nutrients. Um, probably do it on your own, but it also would be helpful to do it with a nutritionist, overcoming traumatic stress. So you'd want to do it with a doctor or therapist, addressing infections and addressing toxins. These are going to be things you want to do with a doctor as well. But um, generally, you want to be focusing on advanced protocols right now. Um, great questions, you guys. Elizabeth said, bought both of your books. Thank you. I'm having very bad hives. I've had it for 20 years. Um, one thing, um, you want to look into blastocystis hominis as a root cause. It can cause hives, Hashimoto's. IBS, and the exciting thing is once we get rid of it, we get rid of the hives, we get rid of the um, IBS, and in some cases, get rid of the Hashimoto's. Not in every case. Some people might still have other underlying root causes, but once we get rid of the blasto, on average, I will see about a 100-point reduction in thyroid antibodies within the first month. Um, let's see. Prednisone shot, now prednisone pack, and ended up in um, emergency situations. You take omeprazole while taking prednisone. Um, that can be helpful because it's GI protecting um, and definitely if you can um, pick up Hashimoto's protocol, I talk about how to test for um, blasto and how to treat it appropriately. Um, let me see if I can get the page out for you here. If you're getting a copy of the book, um, this is going to be really, really important for you to look into. Um, and I dive deep into what protocols you need to do specifically because a lot of times um, doctors are going to be using outdated protocols for it if they even want to treat it at all. So I have some medication and herbal protocols. And we're on page um, 311 is how we talk about testing for it. So um, BioHealth 401H test, GI MAP test, doctor's data, GI pathogen, GI effects. Um, these are advanced labs that will find it. Um, and I have information on how to self-order labs within Hashimoto's protocol. Um, I'll also be putting out that information through my website if you subscribe at thyroidpharmacist.com. Um, and I'm so, so, so excited to have you guys on here. Um, let's see. Linda, thanks so much for sharing. Um, you guys, I'm really grateful for you um, supporting this mission and getting this word out about Hashimoto's. Um, if you haven't picked up your copy yet of Hashimoto's Protocol, I, I highly recommend that you do. Right now, it's number two out of every single book on Amazon, which is quite amazing. Like every single book in the entire country, right? Um, and so we're making a change. We're helping people um, realize that Hashimoto's is important, that we need change. We need to change how this is treated. Um, it was earlier, it was in between two books. One of them was um, two political books, actually. Um, one of them is called, um, is by Bill O'Reilly, and it's called Old School. And then the other one is called, um, on tyranny, and it's kind of ironic because, like, in the midst of these this po these political debates, there's people that are struggling with their health, um, and, and that you guys are really showing that's relevant, and that that's a really big need that we have. And um, another ironic thing is that, like, it feels like when you have thyroid disease, it feels like you're being oppressed, and that like doctors are using old school treatments that just are not working for us. So um, if this is something that um, you know, if this is something you're struggling with or a family member is struggling with, um, I have a link to get a copy of the book. So get book dot at protocol slash protocol. Um, so if you go to um, the link 
that's listed in this Facebook live reading. You can get a copy of the book on Amazon. And then I also have some pre-order bonuses for you guys, or order bonuses, thyroidpharmacist.com slash Amazon. When you go there, you'll be able to order a copy of the book and it'll change your life. So um, thank you, Rita, for sharing this. Marie says, from Montreal, I'm, in a, I'm a Frenchie. I'm so happy to learn about this in Thyroid Secret. I already lost seven pounds in one week and feel more energy. Thank you. Yay, Marie. Proud for you to take action. You guys are amazing. Um, Joni got it under 35 antibodies. Can keep up with other numbers talking so fast. Take what supplements? Oh, um, thyroid antibodies, we want them under 35. TSH between 0.5 and 2. And um, selenium can be really, really helpful. Lisa wants to know where I am. I am in Boulder, Colorado. Um, how long do you have to take all the supplements you recommend? So Jackie, when I go through the um, when I go through the different protocols, so the liver support protocol, you take the supplements for two weeks and then you stop most of them. The adrenal protocol, you take the supplements for four weeks and then you stop most of them. And then same with the gut protocols. You take them for six weeks and then you, you stop most of them. And, and it depends on how you feel with it. Um, so like let's say if you're taking them and um, you feel great, then you, you, know, you may not need to keep, continue taking them. But if you're still struggling, then you may need to take them longer. Um, generally, selenium is anywhere from um, three months to two years. Kelly says that's funny and... Um, Chris is laughing too. I, I think um, this is probably about the bong. <laughs> um, Belisa, is anyone using cannabis as an option? If you guys wanted to share that with her. Um, let's see. Judy, what does it mean if your T3 is higher than your T4? Um, that means that you may need to have more T4 on board. Um, Sedlana is also laughing. Lakehoon, thank you so much for sharing. Um, Amy, why would my endo be totally against me taking supplements? Um, you know, it, it's, it's the way that, that doctors and pharmacists and nurses are trained. It's, we're trained that uh, supplements are not effective, which is like the furthest thing from the truth. Um, and um, I go through, and then we're also trained that they're not safe. Um, and, you know, my goal as a pharmacist, I've, I've worked as a medication in public health as a medication safety pharmacist. So that was like, my main job and so everything that I talk about in Hashimoto's protocol my first priority for you guys is that it's safe and um, second is that it's effective and so you know that everything's been vetted tried and tested um, and um, you know you're in good hands and like endos don't know supplements so you, you're going to want to work with somebody who's trained in nutrition functional medicine and supplements like such as um, naturopathic doctor or functional medicine doctor or, or functional pharmacist like myself Amy says, thanks for answering me on that. I ordered your book and I'm on your online program too. I feel so hopeful. I'm so happy to hear that. Um, I hope that you are a success story. Mana said, Endo said not to take any supplements. You know, they can be very skeptical. Um, um, let's see. Monique, I'm going to order tonight. Can't wait to learn how to feel better. Yes, yes, yes. Joni, NDT way better than synthetic. I totally agree with you. Um, how much liquid iodine do I take? Do I rub it in skin? Um, Joni, you don't want to exceed more than 200 micrograms of iodine because when it's too high, it can be inflammatory. It like makes the thyroid work harder. Tori says, got my book today. So excited. Been trying to find my root cause, but have trouble with doctors in my area. So, um, you know, I'm excited for you to take charge into your own health. Um, I'm going to read a little excerpt here from Hashimoto's Protocol. It is going to be about... Ah, <laughs> giggling at these page numbers here. Getting support, your healing team. I'm a big believer that every person with Hashimoto's needs to be their own health advocate, but it's so much easier to be your own advocate when you've got support. Here's who you should have on your healing team. You, the educated and empowered patient, you are the most important part of your healing team. And this, you know, starts with you guys watching The Thyroid Secret, picking up Hashimoto's Protocol, The Root Cause, getting educated on my website. Um, physician, an open-minded and supportive physician who can monitor your condition and prescribe medications will be crucial. Functional medicine practitioner, 
This could be a medical doctor, a chiropractor, a naturopathic physician, an acupuncturist, a nutritionist, a nurse practitioner, or a consultant pharmacist. The functional medicine practitioner will address your health through a whole body approach. A compounding pharmacist. The specialized pharmacist will offer a wealth of knowledge and be your best bet for getting medications tailored to your individual needs, including thyroid hormones and low-dose naltrexone. Biological dentist. More than a standard dentist, a biological dentist understands that the health of your mouth can affect the health of your entire body. So sometimes the root causes can be root canals and they can be in your mouth, right? A health coach. This professional can guide you, support you, and motivate you in your health journey. Um, support network. Your community will be beneficial to you whether you're new to Hashimoto's or you've been dealing with it for a while. Your support network can be in the form of family members, friends, a coach, a therapist, or a group. And then me. I hope this book, my Facebook page, and the Thyroid Pharmacist blog will serve as another place for you to find support. So yeah. So that's a little reading for you guys. Um, what is LDN? L LDN is low-dose naltrexone that can help rebalance um, the immune system. It's a compounded medication that can be very helpful for putting Hashimoto's into remission. Um, Shirley, I just got my first book, The Cause and the Protocol to Arrive in a Few Days. Woohoo! I look forward to becoming a happy nerd. Just pulled out my enormous book, my dictionary, and encyclopedia. I want no more hypothyroidism. Yes, we, you can make this happen. Um, Gabrielle, thanks for sharing your resource on LDN. Um, Lotus Naltrexone, 0.5 to 4.5. Thanks for helping out, Lisa. Carrie um, has been using CBD and having great results with pain relief and anxiety thoughts. Um, you know, it's, it's something that I know works effective for pain, and some people have been benefited with anxiety. I would just be want to make sure that it's not going to be habit-forming for you. Um, it's something that, um, you know, you want to look at the root causes of what's causing your pain and what's causing your anxiety, right? And it could be um, hormone imbalance or a nutrient imbalance or even an infection. So, so you want to make sure that you, you do things. Leslie, how does ADD relate to thyroid issues? Oh my goodness. ADD is a very, very common manifestation of thyroid issues, and oftentimes getting your thyroid hormones in balance will help with that. Hmm, Melissa, what's a good protocol to safely kill parasites and how long will it take? Um, I have a um, two-month protocol. That's generally how much you want to do. So it's going to be um, two life cycles. Each parasite, um, most parasites have about a 30-day life cycle. Um, and the protocols are going to be in the advanced protocols. Um, I recommend different protocols for different bugs. So different bugs get different drugs. Um, and I also have a general protocol in here in the advanced protocols. Generally, it's things like oil, oregano, and berberine that are going to be helpful for getting rid of parasites. Monica, TSH 66. Wow, girl, we need to get that under control. So that should be between 0.5 and 2 for you to feel your best. Carlene says, thank you. Um, Melissa says, thank you. Chelsea, do most people with hypothyroidism have Hashimoto's? Yep. Right about 90 to 97 percent. So um, Hashimoto's protocol is your bet, best bet if you have hypothyroidism. So hypothyroidism, I think the best way to say it is in an advanced stage of Hashimoto's because Hashimoto's is what causes hypothyroidism. And um, you can have Hashimoto's for 10 years before you go on to have hypothyroid. Um, let's see. Mana says, I take Synthroid. Are supplements going to interfere with it? Um, the supplements in Hashimoto's protocol are not, um, and I do recommend spacing them out by 30 minutes to an hour from um, the thyroid hormones. The only one that you need to space out by more is going to be magnesium. You want to give it about four hours. Um, Mary Ann, I'm subclinical hypothyroid. Will I get Hashimoto's? I have no antibodies. So, um, so chances are you already have Hashimoto's. There's something known as subclinical or there's something known as um, seronegative Hashimoto's where you don't have the antibodies, but you um, still have the Hashimoto's. And most people with subclinical hypothyroid, um, this is stage three of Hashimoto's. Um, do you recommend the paleo diet? Yes, um, I have a, the adrenal protocol is basically based on the paleo diet. It can be very, very helpful. Um, so you can get more information on that in um, the adrenal protocol on what to use. 
Peggy, if we need to self-order labs, do we get the analysis from the lab? So um, some of them will give you the analysis and other ones you might have to either work with a practitioner or um, learn how to read your own lab results. Monica, how much is it? Um, and then the information will be in the book as well. Um, how much is the book? So actually the book is $17 right now. Let me check on Amazon what is going on here. So yeah, so the book is actually on a pre-order special. So usually it's um, about $30. And right now it is $17.05. So they are giving a um, publication week special. And right now it looks like we have 109 reviews of the books. I'm really excited to see that. People are starting to get their copies and um, I know some people got them early. So um, I hope that you guys do get a copy and that I, I hope that it helps you on your journey with um, taking back your health. So um, let's see here, going back to questions, <laughs> Leslie says absolutely old school needs to be retired, I totally agree. Um, and then somebody else said um, Hashimoto's feels like tyranny, yep, I agree. Um, my doctor prescribed the low dose of Synthroid, should I wait to see an endocrinologist? Um, not necessarily, so um, a lot of times the thyroid hormones can be helpful. I do recommend that you read the Hashimoto's Protocol on ways to help yourself. Susan, um, wonderful book. Do I stop Protocol 1 before beginning Protocol 2 or do I continue with them? So yeah, so you do Protocol 1 sequentially. So first you do Protocol 1 for two weeks and then you switch to Protocol 2 for four weeks. And then you switch to Protocol 3 for six weeks and then you go through that um, and then the advanced protocols can be done afterwards or layered on top of these three protocols um, and they usually they don't interfere with any of the three. Dana wants to know if there's a digital copy. Yes, so there is a Kindle copy if you go to Amazon and I have the link in this Facebook Live event description, getbook.at slash protocol. So you can get that there. Um, is the birth control pill or day after pill affect thyroid levels potentially? So thyroid, um, the birth control pill can potentially um, increase our estrogen binding need, which then increases or our thyroid hormone binding need. Estrogen does that, uh, which is contained in the birth control pill, and that increases our need for thyroid hormone. And that can, um, in the presence of nutrient deficiencies and other imbalances, that can trigger thyroid disease. I bought two books, one for me um, and one for my best friend who has hyperthyroids, and we both want to feel better. Carol, sound, you sound like a really great friend. I'm sure um, your friend is really grateful. Nikki says, finally found a doctor to prescribe LDN in Tampa. Thank you for your knowledge. I'm so excited you're taking action. Um, let's see. Deborah, I'm in Australia and on Oroxine. Can you take selenium with that? Yes, um, Deborah, there's actually a study once I um, get back to writing, but selenium actually improves the outcomes of people on oroxine and, and levothyroxine and, and synthroid. So you can definitely take it together um, and it's actually beneficial when you do. Um, you do want to probably, um, just to be safe, space it out by about 30 minutes to an hour. Cheryl says, I pre-ordered your book, can hardly wait for mine to arrive. I can't wait to, for you to get it and um, start, start changing, start improving. Um, Belisa, my husband and kids are often left helpless because I'm always feeling not so good. So sorry. Any thoughts? I hate that they feel this way, but I'm so consumed with how I'm feeling that I don't consider um, what this is doing to them. Hashimoto's is horrible. Um, Belisa, first and foremost, I'm sorry for what you're going through. And I know you can, if, I've been there where you feel guilty because you're not able to show up the way that you want to show up for the world, for your family, for your friends, um, for your children, um, and that that's really hard. Um, one thing I really encourage you is to have compassion for yourself and show yourself the same love and compassion and understanding that you would to your husband if he was sick or to one of your children if they were sick. And start with that, um, and that will make sh that will put your family in a much better place. Take time for self-care. Um, the more self-care you put in, the faster you're going to recover.
Surely, is the TSH of 3.4, 4.43 normal? No, that's considered elevated, so you should be between 0.5 and 2. Barbara says, got my book too, can't wait, that's awesome. Liz said, I can't wait to get my TSH down. Um, Amber says, sounds like my ex-endo, he said no to supplements and said, unless you have celiac disease, it's pointless to go gluten-free. Lies, 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 and misinformation. So sorry to say that, guys, but you definitely will benefit from supplements, and you definitely will benefit from a gluten-free diet. If you don't believe me, just try it for yourself. Just try the gluten-free diet for three weeks and see what happens. Um, if, if it doesn't work for you, you can call me a liar. Um, you know, it won't cost you anything but potentially, you know, potentially losing some symptoms, right? And um, you can always go back to the way you were eating. You've, you really have nothing to lose by going gluten-free. Um, I do encourage you to do it the right way. Um, I have a gift on my website, thyroidpharmacist.com slash gift, where you can get, um, you can get like a gluten-free quick start guide. And then I also have, of course, information in Hashimoto's protocol, which I hope will be, you know, your go-to guide for, for recovering from Hashimoto's. Uh, Rebecca, what do you do with a root canal? So um, if it's infected, you want to um, work with a biological dentist to clear out the infection. So this is not something you do on your own. Um, and I cover things like that in the advanced protocols that give you guidance on how to work with a practitioner and give you like what you need to do. But I'm not like, you know, step one, go into your bathroom. Step two, um, get a hammer. Step three, like, you know, pull out your tooth. So none of that. Um... I know you can reverse hypothyroid. Can you reverse Hashimoto's? Absolutely, Rebecca. You absolutely can. Um, Roxanne, how often do you do these live segments? I don't want to miss any. Thank you for all you do. Oh, I'm so glad. Um, you know, I'm doing them every other day or so, or, um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see. I um, One way you want to make sure that you get notifications, if you go to thyroid farm, like if you go to the page, um, there's you can right click and it says get notifications if you go to the page description here so that you're always notified whenever I go live um, and that way you're not missing out. What kind of drug is LDN? So this is crazy. It's a drug that's used for opiate addiction and it suppresses opiates and um, high levels so people who were addicted um, are no longer addicted um, and um, at high levels, at the standard dose, it can be problematic. In the low levels, it actually boosts our endorphins and it makes us feel better and has hardly any side effects. Um, the biggest side effect, and I've personally taken it and I've worked with um, you know, hundreds of people that have taken it now, and the biggest side effect is going to be um, vivid dreaming. For some people, the dreams, um, the dreams are scary. For some people, the dreams are colorful. For other people, the dreams are erotic, which um, some people enjoy. And um, usually the dreams, the vivid dreaming actually goes away within about a week, a week or two. And then it might come back if you increase the dose, but that's something that resolves. Um, Cheryl, love the thyroid secret. Thank you for sharing your journey and wealth of information. My pleasure, Cheryl. Um, Sheila, what's your thoughts on bioidentical hormones? I think they can actually be more helpful than the other types of hormones because they match our bodies met better and there's some evidence that they're going to be safer. Liz said, I loved armor. I was able to work, go back to school with a little fatigue. I look forward to getting thin and healthy. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you too, Liz. And I hope um, to see you being a success story. Um, what are your thoughts on somebody with Hashimoto's and alopecia? Um, you want to look at um, viral infections and H. pylori and infections as a root cause. You probably want to get on LDN, um, gluten-free diet, all of these things. Like you want to do like accelerated approach because um, alopecia is another type of autoimmune condition. So this means that you're in the later stage of Hashimoto. So you need to act fast and you need to get yourself, um, you know, you need to get yourself dialed in. I would do um, I would do LDN, I would do the gluten-free diet, and I would, I would start, you know, more aggressive with you for, um, for those kind, for having two autoimmune conditions. Um, Marilyn, how many stages does Hashimoto's have? Five stages to Hashimoto's. The first stage is just the genetic predisposition. 
The second stage is going to be an attack on the thyroid, so we could find thyroid antibodies there. This is when we start having symptoms. Um, the third stage, we have um, subclinical hypothyroidism. Um, this may or may not get picked up by doctors. Um, sometimes they'll start you on meds. Um, sometimes they won't. Stage four is um, hypothyroid. So majority of your thyroid has been destroyed. It can no longer compensate, and um, you are now officially hypothyroid, and you need thyroid hormones. Um, so you're talking about the stages of Hashimoto's. The first one is going to be genetic predisposition. You don't have the condition, but you have the predisposed genes. The second stage is going to be attack on your thyroid gland by the immune system. So you can have thyroid antibodies and you can have um, symptoms, but your TSH will still be normal. So most people don't get diagnosed for almost 10 years. Third stage is we start having subclinical hypothyroidism. The TSH might be elevated. You may or may not get diagnosed. You may or may not be put on thyroid hormones. Stage four is majority of your thyroid has been damaged. It can no longer compensate. And so you're officially hypothyroid now. And um, most doctors will put you on thyroid hormones and you're likely to be diagnosed at that stage. Stage five is progression to other types of autoimmune conditions like alopecia, Sjogren's, um, lupus, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis. And so we want to make sure that we can address Hashimoto's, pick it up as early as possible and just start addressing it to prevent the progression and to stop it. And in many cases, we can actually reverse the progression. It's harder to um, regenerate thyroid tissue than it is to prevent damage. So for most people, I recommend starting on thyroid hormones, but I also have treatments and the advanced protocols um, that help regenerate thyroid tissue, including low-level um, low laser therapy um, LLLT, which um, I have yet to blog about because I'm on blogging backlog, but um, all the information can be found in the advanced protocols on that. Um, Joni, can I get this printed later? Brain off, hard to keep up. Joni, you know, the best bet is to probably to get a copy of Hashimoto's protocol because this will have all the information that you have that you want. And you can go to Amazon to grab your copy. Um, you can go, um, there's a link in the description here of the live, live event where you can grab that. Um, Nancy, thank you for these books. I'm so excited and hopeful of getting off of Astroflex meds. I have thyroid removed in 2014. Is it possible to get off my nature thyroid meds? So Nancy, first of all, I'm so excited that you're here. And second of all, acid reflux medications, absolutely. You're gonna be able to come off of them. Um, I used to take like Pepsid, Omeprazole, um, you know, all kinds of stuff, um, Maalox, Mylanta. Um, pretty much tons, everything but the kitchen, you know, sink for the um, for my acid reflux, and go, getting off of gluten and dairy did the trick for me. Other people, they might have to look into H. pylori, SIBO, or magnesium. But pretty much, um, when you go through the protocols, um, we see a huge reduction in the, an elimination in acid reflux with that. So you'll see that as well. I'm really, really excited because that's no longer going to be with you. Um, as far as your right thyroid removed. So if you have had your entire thyroid gland removed, then generally, um, you know, you're going to have to stay on thyroid hormones. And I, I never want to say people like never say never, but until we come up with new technology that rebuilds a thyroid or maybe prints a 3D thyroid, there's some cool technology that's coming out like that. And as soon as, you know, I'm in the know, I'll let you guys know. But for now, if you had your th whole thyroid removed, um, you're going to have to be on thyroid hormones. If you've had half of your thyroid removed, um, there may be a possibility that you may be able to wean off the thyroid hormones, but just to be safe, you know, I wouldn't make that as a priority goal. Priority goal should be to make you yourself feel really good. And um, perhaps um, there is some experimenting with low-level laser therapy that may be of benefit. Um, and, you know, definitely don't give up hope. But at the same time, make sure that you are first addressing your condition and your symptoms and then um, getting off of thyroid hormones. Please don't feel like um, please don't feel like you are a failure if you if you take thyroid hormones. You know, they're not they're not like evil drugs. They're good for us. They're um, the same, especially if you do something like natural desiccated thyroid, it's the same hormone your body would normally make. And um, it's OK to get a little bit of help. Right. From our friends. Um, I wanted to read another little section for you guys. Let's see, what do we have here? 
Uh-huh. How to use the guidelines for success. Use what you can use and leave the rest. I've written this book as a reference and also as a healing protocol that can help the greatest number of people with Hashimoto's. That means for some of you, there will be more here than you need, and for others, there won't be enough. Most people won't need to implement every single recommendation in this book, though I do recommend that all of you follow the fundamental protocols. So, um, let me be your bridge. You might have noticed that I'm a pharmacist whose approach to healing doesn't rely on pharmaceutical medications. The main reason for this is that the conventional medicine didn't have an answer for reversing my Hashimoto's, so the solution I developed was built instead around practices found in natural medicine. That doesn't mean medications don't have their appropriate time, place, and use. In fact, conventional, natural, integrative, and functional medicine methods can all fill an important role in creating health. What's important is that you have an open mind about what might work for you. I didn't used to have an open mind. I was wary of any use of diet, supplements, and testing that were not FDA approved. I thought that the FDA knew everything. But years in public health, self-experimentation, and watching people actually getting better with unapproved methods have completely changed my mind. By the same token, I've also seen some dangerous practices within the natural medicine world. I've witnessed practitioners telling people to forego medications in potentially life-threatening situations or suggesting that if a person just decided that they didn't have the condition, that they would be healed. Just crazy. I have also seen claims of cure-all diets, supplements, and plans, which are irresponsible and potentially dangerous practices. I don't subscribe to dogmas. I believe that dogmas are dangerous. In fact, I often tell my clients not to be a martyr to a soul healing philosophy. In my experience, an integrative and patient-centered approach to healing is usually the most effective approach and also the kindest, as it doesn't prolong unnecessary suffering. So this means always question a practitioner who claims that there's only one way to feeling better with the condition, whether it's just medications and you should never take supplements or change your diet, or you should only do diet, or you should just do supplements, right? So um, you guys, we need to use every tool we have to get better. The truth is that there is not just one way of helping people, every single person feel better and recover their health. Um, everyone is different and may require different interventions throughout their journey. So I hope that this helps. Um, I know that um, sometimes people may hear various things. One person may have recovered their health just by diet, and that's great for them. That doesn't mean that's always the path for us. So we always want to individualize everything to our own bodies and our own cares, and it's good to be kind to ourselves, right? So um, let's see. Hmm. I'm going to answer a few more questions, and maybe if we have a little bit more time for a quick reading. Renice. Rini, what a pretty name. So grateful for you and what you're doing to help with this now epidemic of thyroid issues. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, Shirley waiting for my book. That's awesome. Um, taking leave with thyroxine and my doctor prescribed metformin, hoping your protocol can help me. Um, definitely, I would love, love, love if you can keep track of as you go through the adrenal protocol, how much better you feel because I have a feeling that your root cause is going to be related to blood sugar and adrenal issues. Judy, have they mailed out the gold package yet? They're starting to, Judy, so I'm excited to um, see that coming in. If you guys get it, please take a selfie with it, and please take a selfie with Hashimoto's Protocol once you get it. Let people know that you got it, and um, let people know if it's helped. Um, let's see. Bonnie, I react negatively to any form of vitamin D. I have Hashimoto's and take tyrosine. Due to binder sensitivity, your thoughts. Bonnie, I would really look at gut infections as a potential root cause because if um, that's usually a root cause of filler sensitivity and potentially that may make you fat malabsorbed um, and that could be a reason why you would react negatively to vitamin D. Um, I got a little message here. I was trying to turn off the vibrate. TPO over 800, my doctor says no big deal. Can I address it with your protocol? Absolutely. So the Hashimoto's protocol is going to help you. So that's, that's what we do. We reduce thyroid antibodies. We get them. We get people feeling better. We get people into remission. So you're in the right place. 
I'm sorry that you don't feel better on Synthroid. I think you will feel better with these interventions. Um, you know, just not just a gut feeling. I've, I've got tests to prove it. Oh, I'm sorry. I look like, looks like one of my team members said the thyroid secret packages will be shipping out mid April. So I apologize. Yeah. So, um, April 15th, um, it looks like, um, there was a delay, um, and the books should be received by April 15th as well. Barbara, um, a pre-diabetic following keto diet, would that interfere the following the first protocol? No, so you can actually follow the keto diet as you do the, the protocols throughout. So um, as long as um, you could do all the other things within the protocols, and those are going to significantly help you. Um, Nikki, will this book help somebody that's had radioactive iodine? Yes, um, this will help you. Um, this will help you get back in balance. Um, unfortunately, what I've seen is people who have radioactive iodine, they oftentimes will have um, additional autoimmune conditions if they don't address the autoimmune component. And this actually has um, everything that you, Hashimoto's protocol has everything that you need to know. If you've had a thyroidectomy, if you have had radioactive iodine, this book um, is going to be really helpful for you. So um, I know it's called Hashimoto's protocol, but very much could be used for thyroidectomy and for um, if you've had radioactive iodine. Vitamin supplements you recommend to take, any certain brands. Um, I really like Pure Encapsulations, Designs for Health, and I've also started creating my own formulation called Rootcology. Um, and I have just 10 supplements that are core supplements um, in your healing. And so um, these are some really high quality brands. We do third party testing. Um, we make sure that what's on the bottle, what it says is on the bottle is actually in the bottle, right? Amy, what do you think of ketogenics? Um, ketogenic diet it can be very helpful for some people. Um, I talk about how to modify the ketogenic diet um, and, and you know how to be successful with it in um, the advanced protocols. Jim, gluten-free diet is one of the fastest ways to reduce symptoms. I agree, Jim. Congratulations um, taking charge of your own health. Um, is having kombucha a, okay? I would see, um, I love kombucha. Um, I would want to make sure that you have any yeast and candida in your body addressed before you start having it on a regular basis because sometimes it can feed the yeast. So um, that's something to consider. Um, not a long-term forever no-no, but um, short-term perhaps. Between WP, Nature Thyroid, and Armor, is there one that's better? Um, so yes, um, WP thyroid seems to be the cleanest with the fewest fillers. Um, so that would be something you could start with. Um, and then Nature Thyroid is the second cleanest and then Armor. It's a little bit old school. It's an, it's an oldie but goodie, but um, some people may react to some of the fillers. Is there a way to test whether root canals or implants are causing Hashimoto's? Um, Svetlana, um, this is a great question. Um, I have an entire protocol, the dental protocols talk about that. Um, so they talk about how to do specific tests, their materials compatibility testing to see if the implants are a problem, and then what kind of dentist to see and what things to ask for regarding the root canals. Susan, great question. I uh, loved your book. Um, do I finish protocol one and continue? as I go into protocol two. So you actually do protocol one for two weeks and then you stop that and then you do protocol two for um, four weeks and then you stop that and then you do protocol three for six weeks. Thanks for asking. Um, Mana, is removing amalgams necessary before doing the protocol? Nope. So that's a great question. And amalgams are an advanced protocol, and you may or may not need to remove them. So I go through um, how to figure out if you need to remove them or not in the advanced protocols. And you're going to feel significantly better regardless of what your root cause is, which is why I'm so excited is because this book goes through, um, you know, basically what is um, not just how to figure out your root cause, um, but also like things you could do regardless of your root cause. So we start off with getting you to feel better and we get you good energy, we get your brain working again, we get your weight to start moving in the right direction 
Um, we calm down your mood, we get rid of those joint pains, all these great things um, so that you can then have enough energy to dig for your root cause because I know it, it can be tough. And then of course I have assessments in there to help you dial in to your root cause based on my work with clients to help to kind of narrow it down for you guys so you don't have to be like, you know, digging around. So. Um, Jules said, I'm desperate to have reverse. I'm 32 and tired. My kids have half of a mom. I can't get out of bed at times. I feel like a slug. Jules, you know, hang in there. We're here for you. You can recover your health. Um, I did it. Lots of people here commenting did it. Um, you know, you, you can do this. And Hashimoto's protocol will show you how. Um, where do you buy LDN? Compounding pharmacy. So you want to get that as a prescription and get it from a compounding pharmacy. Um, let's see. Five stages to Hashimoto's, but are there people who have it without antibodies? Yes. There's also something that is um, seronegative Hashimoto's where they don't have it, when people don't have antibodies, but they still have Hashimoto's. Um, have you heard of heavy menstrual bleeding? Yes, that can be a symptom with Hashimoto's, unfortunately. Not a fun one. All right, guys, it looks like Facebook is trying to kick me out. We've hit the two-hour mark. So um, it was really great connecting with you guys. Um, I hope that you check out Hashimoto's Protocol. It's now on Amazon. It's the number two books out of all Amazon. So let's show everybody that Hashimoto's is important and that, um, you know, that this is relevant, that we are not going to stand back silently as, as people... Um, you know, keep using the old school and tyranny on us, right? So um, thank you, you guys, so much. Um, it's been fantastic hanging out with you tonight. Um, I'm going to get some thing to drink because I've been talking a lot. And um, the wonderful and hanging out with you guys. So Rebecca says, congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, Melissa says, thanks for your time. So um, good night, Melissa, Svetlana, Amy, Shirley. Good night, you guys. Um, I thank you so much for the kind words and appreciation. Um, really, really means a lot to me. It's, um, you know, my my number one goal in life is to was to always be a healer and to help people recover their health. And so, um, thank you for allowing me to help you with your health. It's truly an honor and a gift and a pleasure that, um, and you know, it's it's an honor that I that I don't take lightly. So I'm always watching out for you guys and making sure that everything I recommend is safe um, and effective for you guys and gives you the best type of resource possible. So I um, so love you guys. It's been wonderful to see all of, all of your love and all of your hearts and support. Um, hope you have a wonderful night and looking forward to connecting with you soon. I can't wait to see your success stories.